In this video, we review Azure template specs. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Sorelto's. In this video, we cover deploying and using Azure template specs, a way to manage Azure ARM templates as an Azure resource. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Check out my courses on udemy.com and become a member if you're so inclined. Your support is greatly appreciated. Let's get started with what template specs are and why you may want to use them. An Azure Resource Manager or ARM template spec is a way to store ARM templates in Azure and manage them as an Azure resource. This is a first party solution integrated directly into Azure. We add ARM templates as a template spec, then reference the template spec when we deploy a resource. This gives us a couple advantages. We can manage access with role-based access control or RBAC, we can give anyone that needs access to the template read access with their Azure AD identity, while the administrator can manage and upload template specs as needed. Template specs also supports versioning. As we update template specs, we give it a new version number. Then we reference the version we want during the deployment. That gives us an option to deploy new versions while not disrupting any existing automation or processes that use a previous version. Now you may be watching this and not see the advantage of template specs when you have GitHub or Azure DevOps that offer similar functionality. If you're using one of those products to manage templates, template specs may not be that useful for you. However, some environments don't have code management tools. Small and medium organizations may not use Azure DevOps or GitHub, or specific departments such as infrastructure groups may not use those tools. In that case, template specs is a great option for storing and managing template files as a first party solution in Azure. It provides a central version controlled place to keep ARM templates with built-in RBAC control without the overhead of learning Git. Although I recommend learning Git, it's a pretty awesome tool for developing infrastructure as code, but I understand that some organizations struggle to keep up with learning Azure and template deployments and adding Git steepens that learning curve. There is one other interesting feature with template specs, the way it handles linked templates. We can include linked templates as part of the template spec. It's not uncommon to have one main template file that calls other template files to deploy a resource. This makes the code modular. You can piece together different blocks of code in the template file instead of creating one large deployment file. Using linked templates requires hosting the linked template on a public URI, GitHub for example. This works fine if you manage the files, but it's not uncommon to link to somebody else's template, such as templates hosted by Microsoft especially if your organization doesn't have GitHub or another place to host these files. But what if that file gets removed or changed? It could break existing automations or deployments. There's a special property used with template specs called relative path. Relative path specifies the path to a local file under the main template file. That file is copied along with the main file when we create the template spec. That way, we avoid any potential issues if the file is removed or modified. The main and any linked files are all part of that template spec. Including linked templates with the template spec only works with the relative path property, not if the URI is specified. Also, relative path only works if we deploy the template using template specs. Relative path will not work if we deploy the template local. Let's jump into VS Code and see it in action. Here we are in VS Code. Let's take a look at the deployment. I have two files. This example was taken from the Microsoft documentation. Thanks, Microsoft. I'll have a link to all the PowerShell code and the template files below. Be sure to subscribe while you're down there. Let's take a look at the deployment. It uses two files. It's a simple web deployment using a linked template for the storage account. Here's the Azure deploy.json file. This is the example of the main file. It includes parameters, some variables, and the first resource it deploys is the storage account. It creates the storage account with a linked template. This is what it would normally look like if we deployed it directly from the workstation. It's calling a publicly available URI for the template. This will work with template specs, but the template spec will not include the linked file in the template package. It will just reference the link. Let's change this so it uses the relative path. Now, instead of using the URI, it's using the relative path property. There's a folder on this computer called artifacts and the link template linked storage account.json is in that folder. Let's take a look at that file next. 
This is a pretty straightforward storage account deployment. The important part is that it's in a folder under the main deployment file. Let's see what happens if we try to run the deployment. Let's set the variables. We're setting these for the web app deployment. We'll try to run next. Let's create our resource group for the deployment. And now that we have our resource group for the web app, let's try the deployment. And just to be clear, I'm calling the template file directly using the Azure deploy.json file on the local machine. And remember that has the relative path. Also, we're using inline parameters for this example. We could use a parameter file if that was easier. In this case, I'm using inline parameters. Let's run that next. And it errors. It indicates we need to reference an external URI or a template spec ID. The point here is relative paths won't work if it's ran locally. And that makes testing a little tricky because if we have to use a URI to test, then update the URI parameters with relative path once we're ready to add it to template specs. Let's create the template spec next. We'll start with the name and the resource group for the template spec. This is the resource group for the template spec. It's a different resource group from the one we just created for the web app deployment. The template spec and the deployment will have different life cycles and should have different resource groups. We also have the template spec version. We can update the template spec with a new version if we change the template. Let's run this and add the variables to memory. Let's create the resource group next. Next, we'll create the template spec with the new AZ template spec command. We pass in the name, version, resource group name, and location. We also provide the location of our template file, the one that has the relative path for the linked template. That finished, let's go to the portal and take a look. Here we are in the template spec resource group, and there is our web app template spec. Let's open that. Here is the version, the main file, and the link template. We can open up the main file. And here's the contents of our main deployment file. This is the one that's using the relative path. Let's close that and go into the linked file. And that's the contents of our linked file. That all looks good. Let's go back to VS Code and try to run that deployment again. The first thing we need to do is get the template spec ID for the deployment we're running. We could get that from the portal or use get az template spec, passing in the resource group, template name, and version. The version is required. It won't pull the latest if you leave the version number off. We'll run this. Now that we have the template spec ID, we can run the deployment. Instead of specifying a template file, like what failed last time, we're specifying the template spec ID. Let's run this. No red, that's good. I'll pause here until it finishes. That finished, let's take a look at the portal. Here it is, we have the storage account that came from the linked template and the app service plan and the web app. We can take a look at the storage account. That's good, but I always forget about tags. Let's update the template with tags next. We'll start by deleting all the items out of the resource group so we can recreate them with tags. Let's go back to VS Code. Here we are back at the deployment files. These have been updated now to include tags. There we have it as a parameter. And we're also passing that into the linked file. Let's take a look at that. Here again, we have tags in the parameter. And tags have been added to the resource. Let's go back to our commands. We have to update our template specs next. The version we have out there currently doesn't include tags. So the first thing we'll do is update our version number. We'll add that to memory. We don't need to create a resource group. We already have that. Next, we'll run the new az template spec command pointing to the updated template files. That finished, let's take a look at the template specs in the portal. We'll go into template specs. 
It now shows our new version. And let's see if the files include the tag parameter. Our main does. And there it is in the linked file. Before we run the deployment, let's check out versions. Here we can see the previous version and the current version of our template spec. So if we wanted to revert back to the template spec version that didn't include tags, we still have that available. Let's go back to VS Code and run the deployment. We'll start by running the get az template spec command again, passing in the latest version. Next, we'll run the deployment. This time we're adding the tag inline parameter. This will take a minute. I'll pause here and come back once it's finished. That's done. Now we'll go into the portal and view the results. Here we have our resources, and if we go into one of them, it shows our tags are now available. That's how to create, update, and use a template spec for ARM deployments. Thank you for joining me in this video. I hope this helps you better understand what template specs are and how they work. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.